to Road Odyssey, or perhaps maybe Angry Buzzard Autos. I am Burke, and hope y'all are doing well today. Please subscribe down below. Thank you very much. And this video is about the E-Ray, uh, one of the C8 Corvette variants or models that is supposedly up and coming uh, later, like 2023 or so, maybe. And I have not really been investigating this car all that much, so I just thought that I would dig into the news a little bit. I've been curious about the battery technology because there's been so much uh, news and, and so many updates about this sort of stuff that I just wanted to educate myself real quick and that I just uh, drag y'all along. So anyway, hope y'all are doing great. Hope you enjoy the video, and this is what I've investigated up to this point. So here we go. At the 2021 CES presentation, GM Design VP Mike Simcoe confirmed that the company's upcoming Ultium battery pack, quote unquote, enables a wide range of models, especially for a broad brand like Chevrolet. So GM should include an electric hybrid C8 called the E-Ray, by about 2023. Now, 2023 is possible, even though the Z06 ought to be revealed this summer. Uh, the summer of 2021 is a 2022 model. Uh, you know, there has been a lot of C8 spotted that seem to be electrically oriented. The e rays taken the place of the Grand Sport. Uh, this name was registered at least back in 2015 and again in 2020. So it is most likely an all-wheel drive hybrid. And I believe from all the statements that I've read, it is going to be a hybrid at first. Now, take note that the E-Ray could transition into a full electric car, being the C8 EV model. Also, the base price of the E-Ray right now is speculated to be about hundred grand. And they think that this E-Ray will really be a match to the Acura NSX and whatever replaces the BMW i8 and the Tesla Roadster. Now with an electric motor or multiple electric motors in the E-Ray, uh, it is theorized that it will be able to be driven solely on its electric motors. So this would allow the Corvette to be eligible for access to city centers where combustion engines are forbidden. Currently, no pun intended, the downside of the E-Ray is the weight gain, the loss of the front trunk or frunk, and, you know, where are we going to find charging stations? The aluminum structural backbone of the C8 Corvette, seen as the center console, has a volume of about two cubic feet. The Ultium battery pack will be mid-mounted. So basically, right here in the backbone, which currently only houses the coolant lines. The front springs, dampener, and steering components were all located from the start of the program to give half shafts from a pair of electric motors a straight shot to the C8's front wheel hubs. Right now it's thought that there will be two independently controlled 50 plus horsepower electric motors butted together up front in the front. Those two motors up front may add an additional 150, maybe even 200 horsepower to the overall output of the Corvette. What about the batteries for the E-Ray? I saw that the Ultium batteries will be used in three vehicles for sure. The Cadillac Lyric, Cruise Origin, and Hummer EV. All current articles say that the E-Ray will also be using the same batteries. 
a little curious about this, so another one of those we'll see. Finally, what about the performance of the E-Ray? Well, in theory, being all-wheel drive, it will also have possibly wide body kit and three different levels of aerodynamic packages that could really help with the performance. The only problem is the added weight. So it, it depends on if the power to weight ratio is going to be there, you know, and just exactly how much torque are these electric motors going to add. I believe that with all the work that GM and LG are putting into getting their plant ready for producing more of these batteries, that it is very possible that this E-Ray could come out, you know, pretty much as scheduled. Now I'd like to look into the future a little bit and think about the future of battery production. So mining these materials, the lithium, the cobalt, and the nickel, is fairly expensive and has consequences. Currently there is plenty supplies of nickel, lithium, and cobalt, but they are needing to supply a potential three trillion dollar EV market coming up. If they don't have all their supplies, this market could really stop fast. Demand increases for lithium might be as high as nine times what it is now all the way up through 2030. Lithium itself is in high demand and there could be a little bit of a deficit in 2021 here as sales for the EVs really boom. Nickel demands are very similar to the lithium. Uh, it said that its demand increase will be about 14 times between now and 2030. Another little factor some people may not be thinking about is government subsidies for the mining of nickel and lithium. So these subsidies are variable and can have a pretty good impact on the supply of these materials. Another factor that is dependent on the production of these batteries is the mining of the materials themselves. Environmentally, the water used for getting these materials can easily deplete municipal water supply and they use a lot of hydrochloric acid that can get into that same local water supply. So this is very important to consider in the future. That'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope y'all have a fantastic day. Relax, take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye.